Welcome to Thursday Morning Prayer. My name is Canon Andrew Eaton here at St Luke's Walls End, which stands on Awabakal land. And we pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today we remember St Dunstan. Dunstan was Archbishop of Canterbury and the restorer of monastic life. He was born near Glastonbury around 910. He received a good education and later a saintly uncle urged him to enter monastic life. And although he delayed, he in time followed that, uh, that advice. He returned to Glastonbury and lived as a monk, devoting his work time to creative pursuits, illuminating music and metalwork. In 943, the new king made him abbot, and this launched a great revival of monastic life in England. Starting with Glastonbury, Dunstan restored discipline to several monasteries and promoted study and teaching. Under two later kings, he rose to political and ecclesiastical eminence, being chief minister and archbishop of Canterbury under King Edgar. He and his followers were able to extend his reforms to the whole of the English church. And although falling from political favour in 970, he continued as archbishop, preaching and teaching, dying in the year 988. Our psalm today is Psalm 45, and we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. This is the message we have heard from Christ that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 45. My heart is astir with fine phrases. I make my song for a king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips. Therefore has God blessed you forever and ever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior. In glory and majesty tread down your foes and triumph. Ride on in the cause of truth. And for the sake of justice, your right hand shall teach a terrible instruction. People shall fall beneath you. Your arrows shall be sharp in the hearts of the king's enemies. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes and cassia. Music from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters are among your noble women. The queen is at your right hand in gold of a fear. Hero daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. The king desires your beauty. He is your Lord, therefore bow down before him. The richest among the people, O daughter of Tyre, shall entreat your favour with gifts. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is embroidered cloth of gold. 
In robes of many colours she is led to you, O King, and after her the virgins that are with her. They are led with gladness and rejoicing. They enter the palace of the King. In place of your fathers you shall have sons, and make them princes over all the land, and I will make known your name to every generation. Therefore the people shall give you praise forever. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God, we are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. And from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who raised up Dunstan to be a true shepherd of the flock, a restorer of monastic life and a faithful counsellor to those in authority, give to all pastors the same gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may be true servants of Christ and of all his people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we enter into this day, we bring all of ourselves to God, all the people we are meet to meet this day, all the work we are to do, and we hold it before God We pray for the First Peoples of the Diocese, especially the Wabakal, Birupai, Darkenjung, Giwagal, Kamilaroi, Waramai, and Wanarua peoples. We pray for the Diocese, for Peter our Bishop, Sonia and Charlie, his assistants. And in the Diocesan Office, we pray for Glenn Cousins, Executive Director, Jane Dumza, Therese Innes and Megan Moffat in finance, and Zoe Williams and Rebecca Hudson in the ASDF. In the Worldwide Church, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia, the Baptist Church. Nationally, we pray for the Diocese of Rockhampton. In our own diocese, we pray for the Samaritans Foundation for David Hesketh, community chaplain, for the parish of Talara and Rutherford, with Sarah Dully, the parish of Wollumbi Valley. We pray for the parishes in which we live and work, for the people we serve. In our community, we pray especially for asylum seekers and refugees for those being used as a political football, for those forgotten in detention centres. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, Direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will, and may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.